Okay, now this is going to be something slightly different. Um, I, really, I appreciate also that I'm standing between you and lunch, so uh, let's try and sort of uh, crack on. Um, my name's Peter Tribble. By training, I'm a theoretical astrophysicist. That was 25, 30 years ago, and apparently I'm still the world's leading expert in my very narrow field. Um, being a theoretical astrophysicist didn't have much in the way of um, job security, uh, so with a young family you decide that to find something else that you're reasonably competent at, and uh, I'd looked after the computers for the department, so I got transitioned into being a full-time sysadmin, worked on the genome project, various things. Um, my qualifications are actually more as a DBA rather than a sysadmin. I, I do have sysadmin qualifications, but I do. And I just generally tinker with technology. I set up one of the first websites in the UK back in 92. Um, so I've been a systems administrator for a very long time. Um, I spent many years pointing out bugs in Solaris, much to some's disgust. Um, eventually they sort of saw the light and got me to test the stuff before they released it rather than afterwards. Uh, then sort of the Open Solaris project came along and they invited me to help set that up. Um, eventually I got votes onto the um, Open Solaris governing board, which had no power, no responsibility, and um, well, then along came uh, a certain other company, and um, actually Oracle bought Sun on about the day I was later to the governing board. It wasn't fun. Um, and then, out of the ashes, you know, once you've open source something, you can close your copy of it, but the stuff's still out there. So, Illumos emerged from the ashes of Open Solaris. Um, along with distributions like Open Indiana. It's got some key strengths. It's got ZFS, reliable, easy to manage stories, D-trace, observability in the extreme, zones, very lightweight, very powerful virtualization. It's very strict on standards, um, overly strict on standards compliance for a lot of software out there. Um, it has compatibility. It's got decades of heritage behind it. I'm using programs that were built 25, 30 years ago every day on Solaris. And it, they still work. Um, and it's got this general atmosphere and ethos of Solarishness about correctness. And some of these facilities exist in other fine operating systems, um, which is very welcoming, sort of. Um, I'd like the first one in particular to be more widely deployed in other operating systems that I use on a day-to-day -day basis because other operating systems lose, lose my data. Um, what sort of directions are we still going in? Well, a lot of the people working on Iliomos are actually storage vendors. Um, <coughs> Nexenter, Tegile, these sorts of people, quite a few of these people. Um, so they're using ZFS. Um, there's a separate open ZFS project which um, brings out ZFS to other operating systems. The primary contributors to open ZFS aren't Illumos because we have our own master fork and it's largely f finished there. Um, there's a lot of work on bringing um, Illumos up to date in terms of standards compliance, XPG 7. Um, anyone who's used Solaris and tried to use the sort of monstrosity that we have as ORC, um, I pity you, I stumble across that every day. There are places where we want to actually sort of bring things up to date. When Sun open sourced Solaris, there were one or two things that they didn't actually own the rights to. Um, in fact, one of the things that they only got the rights to very, very late in the day was the source code to LS. <laughs> you, I mean, AT&T were very, very reluctant to hand over the rights. Um, that's why it took so long. I mean, some have been trying to open source Slice for, for decades, literally, and you know, so they had to get, but eventually sort of they managed to get the rights for most of the source, but binary redistribution rights for everything. 
Um, but there's still one or two little pieces. The NFS lock manager, I think, is the last one. Um, that we have a replacement. It doesn't work quite as well as the original one did. Um, there's uh, still an awful lot of cruft in the code base. Um, the problem is cleaning that out without destroying your heritage. I mean, after all, sort of one, one man's trash is another man's treasure, and um, you have to be slightly selective. And, and then there are other people playing with other things, like sort of um, back in the original Solaris days, we had the LX brand. This is a, a zone that emulates sort of the Linux kernel and base library, so you can actually run Linux binaries um, inside a, a zone sort of emulated. Um, and then you can actually use all the regular Solaris tools to actually sort of manage and monitor these. Um, that was for the um, 2.4 version of the kernel. It's never been updated. Uh, Joint, one of the sort of big source um, contributors, have resurrected that. Um, and, you know, initially you think this is very interesting, sort of cool, yeah, it'd be nice to run Linux binaries. And then you realize that, in fact, the reason they're doing this is so that they can run current Linux kernels and run Docker inside zones in containers on Illumos. Um, and that'll be cool when it all gets actually contributed. At the moment, they're, they're running in their own separate fork. Um, there are almost as many um, Illumos distributions as there are contributors. Um, Open Indiana was the lineal descendant of Open Solaris. Um, it uses the same build scripts. It's got the same philosophy. Um, OmniOS from OmniTI in the States um, is a stripped down server based um, build. SmartOS is what powers Joyent's cloud. Um, that's pretty much a hypervisor. Um, then you've got Delphix, Nextenda, Tejal, a whole bunch of small companies using ZFS, um, largely focused on storage. Um, there's this funny little thing called Triblix. Um, there's an interesting reason behind the name, if anybody wants to ask. And but there's a huge number of other small distributions um, with you know, sort of either one company or one person behind them. So there's... Now, why, why would somebody like me, you know, with no training or background in computer science or anything, um, actually be interested in building a distribution? The reason is it's hard. Um, I'm, I come from academia where you try and solve unsolved problems. So I had no idea how to build a distribution. I wanted to know how it works. And this helps in my day-to-day -day job as a sysadmin because you know, so we can actually understand really how a system works. But down to the innards, then when it breaks, you stand a much better chance of fixing it. Um, I wanted to satisfy the target audience. I'm also a computer user. Um, so I can actually sort of do a very good job of satisfying my target audience, because I just got to say, what do I want? I also wanted to build a more flexible Illumos platform to, to actually play with, with new ideas. Um, some of the other distributions are um, very constrained in, in the way that they operate and very limited. Um, Deliberately so, um, but you know, they didn't have the, the level of flexibility I wanted. And there were certain reasons, um, particularly packaging choices, that uh, meant I didn't like the other distros. Um, and you know, it's, sort of, it's fun as well, actually, to be honest. It really is fun. What values did I have? Well, um, I'm interested in using modern components. So, in other words, if I have got something, it's going to be reasonably out to date. Um, the word that I would like to use is retro, so the styling is retro. I've got, I don't use, there's no GNOME, I use XFCE as the window manager or Enlightenment. Or I've got AWM or TWM or Afterstaff or Window Maker and all these other things. I like to play with those. I remember playing with those back in the, the 90s. Um, I use SVR4 packaging primarily because that's what's there and I don't like the new packaging system that Oracle came up with. Um, I don't really care. I could have used RPM, but 
you know, I come from an SVL poor background. Um, I want something that's lightweight, something that's fast, something that's simple, something that just works. Um, I've largely achieved that. The sorts of things that I'm actually playing with. Um, one of the key things that I do in the day job actually is zones. Um, the company I work with, um, uh, the Cambridge business is a small offshoot of a large American corporation. The large American corporation is Red Hat 4 and 5 inside VMware virtual machines. And like far too many organizations, I suppose, despite, you know, we'd like to think of an idealized world where everybody's up to date. Um, there are a lot of organizations where system administrators log in via SSH to each box and do something. That's the way that they do it. I just throw a zone and automate everything. Uh, but the way that zones can be, the zone framework that Sun built for Solaris is far more flexible than the actual deployment models that they come up with in terms of the, their products. So Solaris 10 had this notion of sparse root, which is a zone contains a read-only copy of the operating system. It's exactly the same. A whole root zone is a writable copy, but it's still a one-for-one -one copy of the operating system. So I can do that very simple. I can do a partial zone, which is a completely arbitrary subset of the packaging. Um, an alien zone is what I'm playing with at the moment, which is I can take one of the other distributions, unpack its ISO, boot that in the zone. Um, and there's other things, you know, sort of the model, and I've done a lot of this, is playing with sort of the Docker style, uh, one application in a zone rather than a full operating system. So you get the you, you can get the full continuity of a complete and total operating system all the way down to a single app, all with the, exactly the same framework. Um, because I'm a sysadmin, I want to simplify administration. I want just things that just work, where I can just type one command, say, go install me media wiki. Off it goes. And part of that is making the internals invisible. And this is one of the reasons I don't care, I'm not bothered about using an, an ancient packaging system, because I don't want anybody to ever see that packaging system. That's an implementation artifact deep inside that I don't care about. Um, and I'm playing with modern application stacks, and many of those are written with, on top of Go, and Go, as in a lot of um, modern systems, has not necessarily been written with um, Illumos in mind. Um, so fortunately, Joint are reasonably active at porting a lot of this stuff. We've got Go and Go running. Um, and then, I say, simplify the administration so you can actually just say, do this, it'll build you a zone that does that. There's sort of potholes along the way. Well, a general statement about Illumos is there's not enough time, there's not enough people. Um, when you're writing your own distro, this becomes doubly so because, you know, sort of half an hour, a couple of nights a week, really isn't enough to actually sort of do this, but it's fun. Um, there's a lot of fragmentation in Lumos. All the work is being done at the individual distro level. And then there's a central Lumos melting pot where some of the code comes back into the core, or you have to cherry pick commits out of other people's trees. Um, Lumos does support Spark, and I'm actually running it on Spark. Um, there's probably three of us. Um, and, but the idea that you have an operating system that is cross-platform is an important thing to us. Um, and I'm hoping this last one, I said a lot of the stuff's written in Go. A lot of stuff is not just written in Go, it requires C Go to integrate with native code. We don't yet have C Go, although some of the f fixers just coming in from Joyent would indicate that they've got it working because they're patching bugs in Lumos itself. So, thank you for listening. There's a little bit of further reading, and I hope I finished on time. <laughs>